So I want to talk about materials in general um, for the stoves, how we build the stoves, what we build them out of, where we use certain materials, why we use those materials in that position, um, things like that. And the reason I want to talk about it is because I've been getting quite a few emails lately. Hello, always learning. Good morning. Nice to see you. Um, quite a few emails lately from folks, many of them who were just purchased cores and, uh, and they're, they're putting together their stoves and they're often trying to use alternative materials, things they found around their homes, or in off some cases, just perfectly adequate materials, but in totally the wrong spot. Um, and I'm finding myself having to explain a lot why I'm using certain things in certain places and, and not others. And so I just want to talk a little bit about some of the overall concepts there so kind of the overarching concepts that guide how you choose your materials and where you can use them in the stove so first and foremost and we talked we've talked about this a lot but let's just talk really quick about underneath the body of the stove um, it's a great idea to have insulation underneath the body of the stove no matter what you're building it on if you're building it on a non-combustible surface like a concrete slab or a dirt floor you still would, it's a great idea still to insulate the body of the stove from the floor because then all of the heat you generate stays in the stove and stays in your space. The ground is always going to be a giant heat sink. It's always going to be a net negative, pulling heat away from your thermal battery if it's thermally coupled to it. So the best ma masonry heater is always going to be insulated from the ground. So talking about materials for the bottom layer, we want to use something insulated. We want to use insulated fire bricks. We want to use cinder blocks with air space in them, you know, so that we can have air for insulation. Uh, ceramic fiberboard is another op option. Um, a, a raised platform with perlite filled in the inside, um, like a raised hollow platform with an infill of perlite is another great uh insulating layer so the very bottom layer of your stove it's never going to get very hot the, the layer between the floor and the stove it's never going to get very hot so we can be a little bit more um we we have a wider range of materials we can use we can use setting things like concrete underneath here we can use insulated concrete that we can make with perlite and concrete clint i see your question there clint did a really nice job of sharing with us his concrete and perlite mix I think it was five to one if I remember correctly um, so there's a lot of things you can do underneath the stove because it's relatively cool um, Jeremiah Shine says sand another great insulator great example Jeremiah so we can use sand in a you know contained in a hollow canister underneath the stove as an insulator um, to insulate the stove from the floor do we have to insulate the stove from the floor only if you're on a combustible surface. I just told you it's a great idea on any surface, but you only have to if it's on a combustible surface. If you want to couple it to the ground and let the earth be a giant heat sink for your you know, thermal battery, you can do that. Um, but your best bet is going to be to insulate underneath. So moving on up in the stove, now we're getting up into the first few layers of the stove. Now, all of these stoves are going to have different temperatures at different elevations depending on the design, depending on how you burn it, depending on, you know, your climate and 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 what your whole style is. So I can't tell you how hot it's going to be at any particular level. But what I can tell you is that the very bottom layers of the stove will always be the coolest. And depending on how your routing is and your stratification and all that, they're probably going to stay quite cool. And as a matter of fact, I don't know that I've ever seen the lowest layer of bricks on my stove much above 100 degrees. Well, they're very pretty cool down there. So because of that, you can get away with a broad use of materials in that low area. So Clint says, I'm interested in concrete blocks in the bell. Where is the stove cool enough for concrete? So it's a great question, Clint, and I can't give you an exact answer. But what I can tell you is that ideally we want to keep that concrete at, you know, 
below 200 and let's say 250 degrees I think is probably a good um, mean low temp uh, it can it can have instances where it where it travels up above that but we'd like to keep its average temperature well below that I'd say even below 200 degrees probably to be safe what wrecks the concrete is driving the moisture all the way out of it and breaking the um, molecular bond between the uh, h2o and the and the <laughs> concrete I don't know the Portland um, at any rate uh, it's one of those elements within that and uh, so you want to keep it kind of cool I mean concrete isn't a great choice for anywhere in the bell but if it's down low enough it should be just fine um, so we were talking about materials down low and so I do think that in the lowest part of your stove you can get away with concrete you can get away with natural stone you can get away with really a a broad variety of materials um, but at some point as you start to move up that stove you're gonna start to run into issues with things like concrete and even with things like natural stone and so this is the big one I wanted to cover is things like natural stone where can they go and where can we use them and so I do think that natural stone for one thing, we have to really, you know, it's really going to vary on what type of stone, and there's way too many to cover, but we can just say, for instance, we know that soapstone has great thermal uh, characteristics. It can handle thermal um, change well, and it stores heat very well, but there are other stones, and I, and I believe granite is one of them, that are very brittle and won't handle those temperature swings across a, a broad surface. Um, they'll crack, and then there's other stones that will have moisture entrained within them and of course they're going to be really dangerous in a place that gets really hot or goes through really broad temperature swings so what I'm trying to say is is natural stone is just fine in a lot of parts of your build depending on what kind of stone it is um, and I feel really comfortable putting stone on benches and on bench tops I've never run into a I've never built a bench that got <clears throat> a top that really exceeded 200 degrees at any time I think most stone can handle that. It also heats up rather slowly. Excuse me, I got something in my throat. <clears throat> heats up rather slowly in those bench locations. So I don't worry too much about stone there. So I have stone on my bench top. I have flagstone. And I think it's a really, really great material there. I think you could use concrete as bench tops. Um, and uh, I just cast it with a non-metal reinforcing like a burlap I think to try and um, give it some reinforcing you know a material inside but without the temperature change size change that metal has I think metal um, like rebar might tear it apart wire would probably be okay chicken wire but I would prefer to see something like burlap or a canvas in there as a as a support with the um, as a composite substrate within the concrete for your tops if you're going to use them in hotter areas and then we're moving on up in the stove and now we're going to get up into the higher parts of the bell um, maybe it's the part around the riser in a in a regular risered stove or in my riserless cord cook stoves this is going to be the top you know four layers five layers whatever around the core and near the cooktop and these ones, I think we really, in these layers, I think we really start to want to stick to known good materials, clay bricks, clay sand mortar. Um, you can probably use some natural stone on the outer parts of it, but I wouldn't put them exposed to any of the inner parts of it, of the stove, unless you know that they're known good stone for heat. Um, and then in particular, top caps. So I've had a lot of people asking about top caps over the riserless core, or top caps on their bell. And another thing that is in the plans that we don't always talk about in public is I came up a few years ago with my method of using a broad range of materials for top caps and it's a really simple method and it's just insulation and so when you cap the top of a bell or the top of a riserless core and it's over the riser or in any place where you're expecting temperatures to be pretty hot like above 300 degrees or so let's say which is probably any bell that hasn't already seen another bell before it um, 
you really want to use something on top that can handle these temperature differences and it's a pretty big span probably depending on your design so you you know the bigger the span the bigger the temperature difference across it and the bigger the chances of it cracking so if you use insulation like a sheet of ceramic fiberboard as your top cap then you have a whole lot of options with regards to what you can use for your top cap on top of your insulation. So if you add insulation on top, now you can use stone of your choice. You can use granite or slate. Now you could use uh, tile backer and use hardy backer and tile and make a nice tile top and use bull nose and make tile edging or whatever it might be. Um, to create a really nice looking cap. Because you've used that insulation, you now have a lot more options for top materials. So you can now use concrete across that far span, um, even though it's right above the riser. So this is a method that will allow you a lot, a much broader range of options when you start to think about some of these areas that are kind of challenging to you know pick the right material for caps of bells on top in particular um, any cap going over the riser in particular is probably the most difficult spot on the rocket mass heater to source material and in the past and still I get this question all the time I'm gonna have to use ref castable refractory right I don't know how else I'll get a slab that big and every time I get that question I say no just stick a sheet of insulation board underneath it and you're good to go and thank goodness because those castable refractory top caps not only are they expensive and difficult to build but again even though they're castable refractory and they should take the heat as soon as you start to get up to like three feet and four foot spans in one inch or two inches of thick casting it starts to be a lot to ask for it to not crack because of these big temperature differences across those spans so by insulating under the caps we just solve a ton of problems you can use um my, my choice is ceramic fiberboard and Ryan asks um, how does insulation of CFB compare to ceramic blanket especially under the top cap blanket is so much cheaper and that's that's so great Ryan a really astute observation I was just gonna go there um, I believe that the ceramic wool is every bit as insulative as the ceramic board so I think you're just fine to just spread a whole big thing of, of uh, of wool over the top and then cap over the top of that. Now the one thing you want to watch out for is is if it's you know you don't want it to sag down into there and obstruct the riser. It's pretty easy to keep it from doing that. You could probably just keep tension on it while someone else put the cap on and that would pinch it in place and it wouldn't be able to get out of there. You can also if you have a cast top you could cast little pins in your top and push the wool into the pins and fold them over to retain it. Um, there's a whole host of ways you could probably get that stuff to stay up there. But do just be aware of that with the wool. That's my one concern with the wool. I actually think it's probably a better insulator, to be honest, because it's, it's lower density. Um, so if you can get it to stay in place, and you might be able, you know, you can get two inch wool and, uh, and it'll compress as and make a great seal where you put the cap on the edges, but through the middle it'll stay two inches thick and that is that's probably the best insulation you can get, probably, in my opinion. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, there's that. In the